ask, Lord, that you would give us uh, discernment and clear thought, Lord, and help us to make the right decisions to the benefit of uh, the children as, as a part of this system, the teachers, Lord, and, and even our county. And we just ask God you'd bless us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, everybody can sign in. Oh, okay. Maybe not. There it is. Okay, please sign in now. Yeah. My mouth ain't working. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, you're good. You're here. That's, that's right. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Gail. Look at her. Yeah, I'm going to do my big one. Present, Fields, Present, Present, Fields, Present, Fields, Present, Fields, Present, Fields, Present, Fields, Present, James present, Lester present, Lester present, Miller present, Morgan present, Sierra present. Thank you. Okay, first item is recognition of guests. Um, Barb Murphy. Hello. Hi. <laughs> My name's Barb Murphy, and I'm the brand new president of the Campbell County Art Association. And I'm going to let Alan Miller tell you all about our club. He's been in our club forever, and since I'm brand new, then I'm going to let him speak for me. Okay. Thank you, Barb. Uh, I think most everybody here knows me. If you do not, my name is Alan Miller, um, former president of the Campbell County Artists Association. Those of you behind me, my name is Alan Miller. Um, I was president of the Artists Association for about five years. Um, we were founded. Uh, you should have one of these, by the way. I put it by your names. And what Barb and I are here basically to do is every couple of years, every three, two or three, four years, we like to reintroduce ourselves to the school board, to the county commission, to the various cities and so forth, to let them know that we, who we are and where, you know, who we are and what we are. If you look at your little pamphlet here, I'll, I will be real brief and then I'll speak about um, some of our artists that were, that were supposed to be here, unfortunately, due to um, events beyond their control, they are not in attendance. But the Campbell County Arts Association was formed around 2006 by the late Trulene Nash and Sam Chapman. Um, and since then, we have grown into a large organization. And within our organization, we are, are responsible, I say responsible, but we, we hold several events, um, namely Art in the Park every spring. If you look in your pamphlet, I'll go down. Um, where it's a combination of all local arts and crafters and we set up in one of the parks in downtown La Follette and we showcase and sell our artwork. Um, we are also heavily involved in Louie Bluey. Um, Barb is actually co-chair of the art committee uh, in Louie Bluey, a position that I used to hold, um, uh, which I do not anymore. I still hang the gallery show though. Um, we also do youth art outreach. Um, uh, in the past, we've gotten grants where we have helped after school. Uh, we also work in conjunction with the uh, Campbell Culture Coalition uh, in their youth art outreach programs. Um, we are currently doing a gallery exhibition. If you have not been to the La Follette Eye Gallery, then I recommend that everybody here stop by the La Follette Eye Gallery and look at our art gallery exhibition. They created an, an actual hallway specifically to showcase local art. Um, so if you don't get your glasses from them, you can still stop by and just meander through there and you will see our artwork. Um, we do field trips. If any of our artists are uh, showing artwork in the gallery somewhere, we will go see them. We will support them. Um, and we do networking and supporting. Um, our meetings, we meet the second Thursday of each month. Local artists, we get together and we discuss art. We discuss how to um, create art and we discuss how to put art into the county, into the community, and what we can do to better not only ourselves, but art in Campbell County. Uh, believe it or not, Campbell County is actually in an art renaissance within the last 10 years. 
Campbell County is now the, the home of the Louis Bluey Festival, which is amazing if you've never been. Uh, we have Art the Park, we have Postmark La Follette, which I'm on the advisory board, uh, where they do plays, we do art galleries. Um, we just have a lot going on. And a lot of people don't know that, so every now and then we just like to let everybody know. Um, and we are also the creator and I guess the purveyor of the art quilt, the uh, Appalachian Quilt Trail. If you don't know what the Appalachian Quilt Trail is, you can actually go online. People take their vacation to look at quilts on barns. We create barn quilts that go up on your barn and people go and look at these. And we are the main creator of those. Um, and anyone can join our organization. You don't actually have to be an artist. If you just want to come hang out, talk art, learn how to do something, be with some awesome people, you can show up. Uh, this show, this lets you know how. Um, I would also like to briefly speak about the Campbell Culture Coalition. Um, as I was a former board member of the Campbell Culture Coalition, and I think, yes, Manuel and Peter may, Peter may still be here, but there's Manuel. He's the director of the Campbell Culture Coalition. Uh, and they have done two dozen art programs that have taken place in Campbell County Schools over the last two decades. So they are a wonderful organization, and they are basically the umbrella of the arts and culture of Campbell County, and we are all pretty much decided to be under them. So if there's a large grant we need, we I don't do that anymore. I just call Manuel, and he didn't, you know. But uh, it is a wonderful organization, so if you are looking for a large outreach program, the, the Culture Coalition is wonderful. Um, and I just want to touch on real quick, and I will let you all go, um, about myself. Uh, if you don't know that I'm the editorial cartoonist for the La Follette Press, don't throw anything at me, please. <laughs> I will not satire this meeting, because I'm in it, so you're, you're safe. No. So now you know who to get mad at, but anyway. I, I'm the founder of the Ghost Walk La Follette. If you've not taken my tour, I will plug it. Please come take my tour. Um, and as I said, I'm the former uh, president of the Arts Association. I'm also a... Uh, part-time professional artist, uh, and a friend of mine, Jacob Riggs, who is not here, we have created Expression Studios, where we go around, we've painted five murals. Uh, if you've missed the two in downtown La Follette, you need to see them. Uh, one of them is with the elk and the fish in the alleyway to Bowman's. Jacob and I did most of that. Manuel did 17%. Um, and then the big one by Carl Pierce, Jacob and I did that one as well. We are getting ready to do a giant mural on the coffee shop, and then we've done several private murals in houses. Um, another award-winning artist, her name is Rissa Reichart. She's the current secretary of the CCAC, and she's a local award-winning artist, painter, muralist. In 2016, she painted a 24-foot mural in the Tennessee School of Beauty, and she was uh, on Live at Five. So. Um, and she also painted a giant four-wheeler on the Honda shop window. I thought I'd plug that in there for her. You can follow her on Instagram at eclectic underscore Rissa. And you can also follow Jacob at artist Jacob Riggs on Instagram. Um, I know I went really fast because y'all got a lot to talk about. Do you have any questions you would like to ask me? Ellen, would you please share with everyone where the I place is that they can see the gallery? Um, it's the new I building right next to the bank, uh, Community Trust, right there at Weirwoods. You're okay. turning into Weirwoods, you've got the I uh, gallery on the left and you've got the bank on the right. Thank you. So it's the brand new, really nice building. You cannot miss it. Thank and you for the being gallery here. is in the middle of the building. So when you walk in and you see the girl at the desk, turn right, tell her what you're there for, you know, first, you know, someone around. But then you can, once you turn right, turn left, you'll see it. It's, it literally is the, takes up the entire aisle of the inner building. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I hope uh, I didn't go too fast. Um, and keep a hold of these. These actually, um, they have Barb's number on the back. So if you need to reach her, you can. Her phone number is on the back. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Alan. Alan. Alan, can I have Okay, the next guest is the Campbell County 4-H speech participants. Um, do you want them to all come up? Or? Yeah, I'll, what I'll do is I'll call them up um, in no particular order by certificate. Um, and if you're here, just come up and get a certificate. And I think it would be hopefully in order to get us a picture with all the board maybe in front of the podium. Would you like me to call their names and you can step out there and hold them out? 
But uh, just preface this real quick, all the names that I was given was given to me by the 4-H agent, so hopefully I've got all the names, should have all the names. But uh, I had the honor of judging uh, the contest for fourth grade at Carable um, of this year, and it was just spectacular, remarkable, well done to everyone um, in uh, attendance and participation. All the students done absolutely amazing work, um, and you're all winners. You should all be proud of what you've done, and we just thank you all for representing our school system uh, in, in the best way that in, the, in that you can. We just thank you all for your hard work and keep up the good work. So we'll start. You'll call them. I'll hand them. Okay. Levi Johnson. Come on around, Levi. You can come up here. Zoriana Rutherford. Macy Mussel. Jade Higdon. Haven McBride. Madison Radner. Emmy Stanfield. Samuel Queener. Abigail Cadell. Cadell. Kelly Jones, Maya Nelson, Jace Huddleston. Oh, goodness. Popper, Popper, Quintos, Popper, Haven Began, Sarah Emmert, Presley Chapman, Josie Maiden. Mahala Combs, Jasmine Mitchell, Robert Cole, Gracie Booer, Patricia Goins, Madison Pierce. Sarah King, Gabriella Valdez, Jessa Riggs, Olivia Hackler, Natalie Carranza, Jacob White. Bailey Nelson, Cody Freeman, Cooper Simmons, 
Mahala Seal. Junie Baker. Reagan Davis. Hope Hargis. Bailey Minton. Madison McCullough. Lindy Jeffries. Joanne Begley. Reagan Graham. Tristan, is there Tristan here? Tristan. <laughs> uh, Didi Patel. Didi Patel. And Autumn Rutherford. I'll send her back. Can you? Yeah, Autumn's here. Yeah. I would like to say congratulations to these uh, fine looking uh, boys and girls. Congratulations on doing an outstanding job. And I cannot believe that Levi and Maya are actually standing up here because I remember when you all were just beginning to talk. <laughs> and I would like to say get well to Jessa Riggs. She is not here tonight because she is in the hospital recovering from a surgery. So congratulations to all of you. agenda with the addition of an addendum. I can find it. What is it, Kev? 
Three B. Vanilla building committee minutes. Yes. Uh, just need a motion to approve those. So I'm moving that, Chair. Second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Would anyone like to change the vote? Reveal their vote. Yes. 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 Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion passed. Now I need to get a motion to for the approval of the regular agenda. <coughs> Madam Chair, I make a motion we approve the regular agenda. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? Cast your vote. Confirm. Anyone like to change the vote? Reveal the vote. Yes. 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 Along with the rest of us, the article from the New Sentinel about uh, a former employee that we just dismissed for insubordination and failure to follow board policy. Just like any time an article like that breaks, there are two sides to every story, and there are a couple of things I wanted to clarify. The first related to um, one of your old football coaches that was quoted as saying uh, he gave a strong recommendation for this individual. Um, that's simply not the case. Um, my understanding from talking to this coach, um, he did get a call from the uh, football coach that wanted to hire him and said, hey, this guy was a pretty good football coach for me, but you better be aware that something happened where he was fired from the school system. Um, your all's football coach would not have known the details of the firing because for those of you that remember, this was a lengthy process that went over two school years. And given that he was going through an administrative appeals process, the only information that was disseminated to the Board of Education was done in executive session. So we would get reports from your local paper and all we would say is, look, there's administrative review that's going. I would update the board and I couldn't even give the board the full information because his ultimate appeal came report. This football coach would have had no access to this information whatsoever. So that was a, and after that story was printed, I spoke to the reporter that printed it. She spoke to the football coach, spoke to Director Field, and called me back and said she believed that football, the Draws football coach was telling the truth, believed in Director Field. And there is no way that this young man could have known any of the details that were going on. So that was the, the first thing that I'd like to clarify. Draws coach did absolutely nothing wrong. I've coached 35 years. I cannot tell you the number of times I get calls on assistants that have applied for jobs. And they'll ask you what sort of coach they were. If they're a good coach, I'll say, hey, if you're a good coach, if you're a bad coach, I'll say, the reason he's not here anymore. Um, that was a total um, second thing. The principal for Pigeon Forge Middle School has since issued a retraction of his statement and has, has admitted that he did not contact anyone affiliated with the Campbell County School System before making the hire. The football coach at the high school does not hire the middle school teachers. The principal at that middle school was solely responsible for hiring Mr. Turner after further investigation from the new central reporting staff. 
he admitted that he did not contact anyone associated with Campbell County School System or seek any sort of a reference before he hired Mr. Turner and hired Mr. Turner solely on the recommendation of the high school football coach's request. Did no background check, did no interview, did uh, nothing to say, yeah, but he wants to be his offensive line coach, we'll bring him on. Um, the third uh, inaccuracy that occurred had to do with reporting to the state. As soon as Mr. Turner, and this would have been in May of the 2016 school year when the investigation began, Mr. Nider first suspended him without pay, and the state of Tennessee was notified by Director Nider that there was a suspension without pay pending further investigation. The reason you do it that way, we don't do it that way anymore. As of July of 2018, you changed the process. But back then, the director of schools would notify the state that there was a, a suspension. The finance department would quit issuing paychecks, and he would quit accruing dates for his retirement. And then that suspension stays until such time as they are notified otherwise. Back then, it was not incumbent upon Mr. Nidifer to do anything else. Uh, at the time. And keep in mind, you're also going through a transition where Mr. Knifer is leaving as your new director is coming in. I talked to the state myself and I asked them, you, you were aware of the suspension? Yes, you were aware of the reasons for the suspension? Yes, you quit giving him credit for his, his time there? Yes. Well, what more are we required to do? And there's been this rumor flouted that uh, Mr. Nidifer's teacher's license was in danger. It's in absolutely no danger. He had no requirement to do anything beyond what he did at the time. So uh, I think the articles, you know, as you have read them, nobody reads the second, the third, the fourth article. The new symbol has been pretty good about exonerating your all's employees and staff. I can tell you personally, having handled the entire prosecution, of this case, that there was nothing inappropriate done by any of your staff or employees. You handled everything perfectly. Uh, your football coach did nothing inappropriate. Mr. Nidifer did nothing inappropriate. And you all should be applauded that you're the one that caught the guy and actually had him fired uh, and sent him back. I mean, I would say this, that all these other schools that hired him, you know, these type of people don't change their spots. And he was caught almost immediately and dismissed. So if you have any questions, I'm pleased to answer them. But I did want to give a full retelling. I know some of you have reached out to me, uh, but I've been in I do have one question. Yes. Why wasn't the parents notified um, that their teacher was involved in this activity? The reason is that your, the teacher was suspended immediately, and there was no activity that was related to student conduct. All of the conduct that occurred was related to either insubordination or failure to follow board policy. So the so activity with the children is false. Is that what you're There was no activity. Now, in Pigeon Forge, he has been There was no activity of children rubbing massage in his all head. That and was, all that. that was dealt with, and he was written up and reprimanded for that. And at that point, there was a total interview that was done. And there was no interview done with the parents to check with their children that were in those classes. Respectfully, that's not true. That is an incorrect I was opinion. a parent and I was not notified. Just because all parents weren't interviewed doesn't mean that there weren't interviews with some parents. We personally contacted several parents that observed the behavior. He admitted to the behavior. Um, at that point, he was reprimanded, he was put in his file, and that behavior was never repeated again. So it's okay that some parents and some kids are ignored. No, there's no reason for any parent or any child to ever be well, ignored. Well, the parents aren't finding out until you just hit the news, though. This is the first we're hearing about it. Well, I disagree with that. If you read the La Fama Press articles, they did a very good job of covering this from the beginning. And one of the things we told the state of Tennessee is you simply Google Dan Turner's name. Before he was hired, the Fall of Press had multiple articles where they would make recordings of findings that I would make to the board. Is it the Fall of Press's Press's job to notify the parents, or is it the school board? It's the, the Board of Education's responsibility to remove a potential predator from the situation immediately, and they did that. The Board of Education immediately contacted the police. 
the police said that there was no inappropriate activity that was done with the children. DCS did a complete investigation, and the police department did a complete investigation. And at that point, once it goes into a public review, there is nothing that we can report. We have to let the due process work out for the employee. Their job is to protect the students. They protect the students. And this guy was never allowed to come back onto the grounds in <coughs> I have to disagree with some of that. Um, I think it's the job of the school board to let parents know what's going on in their children's classroom when this kind of activity happens. I mean, if it was your children, would you not want to know that this is going on? Well, what they, respectfully, what would they have told you? We have actively turned this over to the criminal investigation and the DCS investigation. How do you announce that? You want the Department of the Investigation to remove the person, the predator, from the children and you let the police. The parents still have the right to know. There's no way that you can do it. I mean, you know it's in the classroom <coughs> with the teacher. But you have class red rolls. I don't think it's, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to argue, but I think it's a, a reasonable thing here. I don't think we need to push stuff up under the rug and hide these things. There from was, parents. There was nothing pushed under the rug, and I will take responsibility for any action that was told with the board, and it is my job to disseminate information to them, and then I make a decision as to what information can be disseminated to the public. I instruct them that under uh, an existing criminal investigation that was going on, not to make any statements to the press. So if you're upset with anyone, it should be directed to me. Well, like I said, I'm not here to argue. I just think when need more openness and the parents need to be knowing more about what's going on in their classroom. Look how much open they were as opposed to what you got in this report with you. They could not have been more open uh, with the community or the press. No, it took two years before it all came out. No, nope, it was on the press when the day was suspended. Well, like I said, I disagree. I think the school board can do a little more in notifying parents when these things happen in their child's classroom. I mean, this is something major. I mean, can we take an extra step and make sure that every child that's been exposed there has been heard and the parents know what's going on? I don't think that's unreasonable. Okay, so that, and that's just my suggestion. I mean, you can keep doing what you're doing. Well, I understand your concern, and I appreciate you sharing it with us. Uh, I, I, I actually have, I mean, I, I understand it, and I share it. There are just things we can't do even for the perpetrator until it goes to due process. But I do understand your concern, and I, I do share that. I would want to know, too. I, would want, I, I mean, I'm sure some of you, maybe some of you don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I just wanted to speak that out. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions, Bill, from you? History. I'll end with this. Uh, have you been to it? I would not have advised you any differently after the fact, and I think you all acted appropriately 100% down the way. Thank you. Thanks, Dale. <clears throat> um, a couple of committee meetings. Um, I think we have a policy committee meeting on Friday at noon. I uh, have a budget on the 21st. Is that correct, Steve, at 530? Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, and going to discuss something that um, Josh James wants to discuss and um, a one-on-one-to-one -on -one -one program that Noah wants to discuss. Um, after that, if time allows, we'll do a quick um, talk about the director's evaluation right after that. So um, that's all I have. So it's the director's monthly report. Okay, um, I would like to say that uh, this Wednesday, well, next Wednesday, core drilling will begin at White Oak uh, Elementary School to uh, check the condition of the soil samples and whatever they need to uh, make a determination on how to progress with classrooms or what the building process may be. So that will take place uh, next Wednesday. Also, we just completed our desktop monitoring and uh, had clear findings. Everything was great. The district was great. And they randomly, the state randomly chose uh, two schools, Jellicoe Elementary and Caraville Elementary. And it was a perfect report at those schools. We were in compliance with everything. And the district is, uh, at this time, still going through fiscal monitoring. 
So all that is uh, going well, though. And uh, I just saw Miss Gail Stanley come in. I haven't seen her in a while. And uh, Gail, will you stand, please, just a minute? Gail is someone who works tirelessly to help our county, and we. She has just emailed me two grants that uh, she has uh, helped us receive. So I have not met with her to go over the full details about that, but I do know that one is over $12,000 and one is a $17,000 grant. So I appreciate all she does for us. Okay, um, next a legislative report from Faith. Okay, um, I handed out a little packet with the board members tonight that talks about some of the legislation that's coming up and legislative activities. And, and I know you say, well, what has that got to do with us here at our board meeting? Because that's going on in Nashville, that's going on in, in Washington, D.C. Well, what goes on there affects us here every day. Um, I handed out one of the the papers was the 2019 legislative agenda that TSBA has voted on and has got coming up in the General Assembly. It started um, uh, in January and their cutoff date for filing bills was last Wednesday and last Thursday. And at that time, there were 1,500 bills introduced and filed and 300 of that 15 was education bills. So um, these are bills like the vouchers that we're going to be voting on a resolution later in our meeting and nurses situation and teacher salary and uh, I could just go down and down the line but read you can read this and then also I printed a page that has um, our local legislatives Dennis Powers and um, Ken Yeager with their contact information and they like to hear from me and when we write to them and call them they do appreciate it so the other one was on the national level on the federal le level and some some of the things that they're going to be discussing in this um, 116th Congress session it has to do with um, with their special ed um, they it, years ago they did mandated all of these rules and regulations and they said they would fund 40 percent of the cost to that. Well, today they're at 15% of funding that. So, you know, it's important if they mandate something that, that we see to it that encourage them to fund it as well. So I appreciate your time and if you want to go online and get more information, I encourage you to do that or if I could ever help you with a phone call, just please let me know. Thank you, Faith. <clears throat> Recognize uh, Jeff's substitute tonight. The 42 cents, and expenditures are at 41.2%. Are there any questions? Is there a motion to approve? Madam Chairman, I move we accept. I'll second. Any comments or questions? Cast your vote. <coughs> Anyone want to change the vote? Who builds the vote? 
Creekmore, yes. Burge, yes. Fields, yes. Heather, yes. James, yes. Lastly, yes. Leslie, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion passed. Okay, item B is to approve the budget amendments and resolutions. In your packet, there are three budget amendments. It's a pleasure of the board. All at once. Can you give us just a brief overview of each? Okay. Um, the resolution 2 1 is just free enrollment in the Gear Up project. There's two with the Step Fund. Second. There's no questions. Cast your vote. <clears throat> Does anyone like to change their vote? Reveal the vote. Great work, yes. Burge, yes. Fields, yes. Heather, yes. James, yes. Wesley, yes. Lester, yes. Miller, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion passed. Okay, item C is reviewing the bids and recognize this. Item C is the request for permission for advertising and everything one for the parking lot for the new front entrance at the public house. Madam Chairman, we met with the Building Committee and discussed this. They and I both have met with Ms. Wheeler. And the uh, Building Committee agreed to bring it to the board, so <clears throat> I make a motion we uh, submit for bids for the front entrance for paving for the parking lot for the new entrance at CCHS. I second the motion. Bring that deal. Okay. Any uh, questions or comments? Cast your vote. <laughs> Do anyone want to change their vote? Reveal the vote. Yes, Burge, yes. Fields, yes. Fields, yes. James, yes. Lastly, yes. Miller, yes. Lester, yes. Morgan, yes. Smith, yes. Motion passed. Item E for request permission to accept renewal contracts. Thank you. Thank you. Update from Faye Comer. The January activity reports were placed into the cloud today, so I know that did not give you enough time to review, but at your opportunity, review those. If you have any questions, you can call or email at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Okay, bring this down to items for action. Consider approving 2019-20 Campbell County school year calendar. Uh, do you recommend this calendar, Ms. Field? Yes. Uh, I make a motion we approve the school calendar for the 1920 school year as presented. I'll second that. 
Any discussion? Okay, cast your vote. to change their vote. Reveal the vote. Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, this is something we have discussed and wrote letters and everything, so I'm happy to see this on here. Approving resolution opposing school voucher. You get a motion to approve? Madam Chair, I make a motion we approve. The resolution is presented. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Um, one thing I would just discuss um, concerning this, I spoke with our attorney in Ben Torres in Nashville this afternoon to see how things had started off, and he said they were mainly in committee meetings and getting committees set up and everything, but he said on a good news, uh, good note, that they had withdrawn one of the voucher bills. Uh, he said there were more out there, but the good news is there was one withdrawn to Today. Okay, no other discussion. Cast your vote. <clears throat> Anyone like to change the vote? Reveal the vote. Yes, Fields, yes. 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 Item C, consider revising the following board policies from June, as recommended by PSBA June 2018, due to changes in state law. Second reading. Um, 5.03, Family and Medical Leave Act. 5.802, Qualifications and Duties of Director of Schools. 6.3, Code of Conduct. 6.309, Zero Tolerance Offenses. 6.314, Corporal Punishment. 6.409, Child Abuse and Neglect. Motion. Second. Um, do we have a second? No, not yet. Okay. You can be the second. No, I don't want to because I need to ask a question. Okay. I'll second the motion. For okay. okay. Um, I needed to ask uh, Jennifer, this includes corporal punishment. Is that the policy that you wanted us to consider changing? If so, we need to, um, we need to pull that one and vote on it separately. First reading, yes, that is the, is it the corporal punishment for no? Mm -hmm. this, this one. Okay, this one so it's not, no. but if we, if we approve it on the second reading, do we need to do that or take, pull it off? I yeah, think it's. <laughs> okay. So does that mean we should wait the, on that? The, this one is to take care of um, state law in June yeah, 2018. students with disabilities being Paddled. It probably needed to be done last June. I hope that our principals are, you know, know about it. But uh, it's my recommendation we pass this tonight's second reading and address the changes the directors asked on Friday. So we can bring it up at the next meeting. Is that all right with you? Yes, um, that that's Miss Fields. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the principals are aware of the, uh, when we found out about it, even though it wasn't uh, approved for our, as one of our policies, we have followed the procedures and have that on file and okay. it has been reported correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we have a first and second. Any further discussion? Yeah. For clarification. Okay. Um, it is item C, which entails 
all of the oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. We are also doing <laughs> the policies from August 2018, 3.212, district water testing, 6.2, attendance during post-secondary visits, um, August 2018, due to state law, second reading, 1.701, school district planning, 4.206, special programs, homeward, homebound instruction, Consider adopting policy 4.608, second reading, and the policy 5.203, recommendations and file transfers attachment, or second reading. All these are on second reading. Which, so we've discussed all this last month, so this is just the second time. So I guess need to do another motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. If there's no discussion, cast your vote. <clears throat> Would anyone like to change the vote? Rebel the vote. Trickenwood, yes. Burge, yes. Coolidge, yes. Heatherly, yes. Chambers, yes. Aston, yes. Aston, yes. yes. Miller, yes. Morton, yes. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Items for discussion. Don't look like there is any. Uh, legal matters? None? Okay. Recognize school board members. Ms. Lisa? Okay. Um, yes. I just want to say the little cakes that you all have at your desk, the board members, that it is from, there was a note on the box that says, uh, sorry this is late, bunt, and they're bunt cakes, so I think they were thank you. <laughs> we hope that you enjoy these. It says thank you all that you, what, for what you do for our schools. You are very much appreciated. It is from the um, Campbell County High School Health Science teacher, Tiffany Medley, and the Campbell County High School counselor, Kyra Pierce. And they said they want to thank each and every board member for everything that you do for our county, our director, and our board secretary. They appreciate you all very much. So that is from them. And I just want to say I'm very proud of the students that were here um, for 4-H tonight. That was a speech class or speech. And um, most kids are very shy and don't like to speak in public anymore. So um, very proud of those students because they seem to be very proud of, of what they had done. So, and that's all I got to say. Thank you, Lisa. Brent? Josh? Good. I just want to thank all of our central office staff for being here and in being a part of our meetings. I appreciate our county commissioners that are here to show your interest in our educational system. And I appreciate the other people in the audience that show an interest in coming. Thank you for being here. Noah? Thank you. And just a few quick things. I know Vicki's not here, but they rolled out the uh, pizza maker this morning at Jacksonville Middle School, and I saw pictures on Facebook, and it was absolutely amazing. Um, so thank you, Vicki, even though she's not here. Um, second thing is we have uh, TSBA Day on the Hill is next week, and our meeting with Senator Yeager is at 1.30 on Tuesday, and I have yet to hear back from Dennis Powers, so I will call until I get an answer. So that's all I have. Okay. Ronnie? Yeah. I um, just want to say that me and member Fields are going to be starting a little project at Valley View. We're going to actually let the kids grow a garden. Uh, we're going to be meeting um, probably this week or next with the principal and some teachers. Um, we're looking forward to that. Me and Lisa um, got some ideals that will really help the kids in the Valley spirit. Um, we are having the policy meeting Friday at noon. Um, there is a change been asked for on abolishing corporal punishment. I mean, I encourage the public to let your board member know how you feel. Um, and we will address that on Friday in committee. So thank you. Steve? Okay. Crystal, I do have one more thing real quick. I just want to say um, Director Fields has been sending a memo, a note out to us on Sunday evenings about the upcoming week and the things that they have been doing at central office and things they've been getting done, meetings they've been attending. And thank you, Ms. Fields, for that. That is very helpful. I appreciate that. That kind of keeps us up to date on things that are going on. Like I know I've, I was absent last month. I didn't get to be here, and that really helps. So thank you for 
for that. I appreciate that. Madam Chair, I just have one other thing. Um, at your desk, there is a, a package of policies that is uh, for us to review in February, and I would encourage everybody would help uh, Jeff and, and the policy committee when we meet. Uh, these are the ones that we are to review during the month of February, so please try to get around to it. Um, I have a question. The policy for qualifications for director of school schools is not in the packet, or it's not in mine. Do we know where that is? We, our committee hasn't met. How, how, we've not had a meeting. It's about the, uh, the director of schools or her, his or her designee must report felony convictions of licensed educators within 30 days of receiving knowledge of the conviction. I think they'll let go. That's the new law. Okay. That's what went into effect on July. The That's what it is. Oh, yeah. I've got it right here. Yeah, yeah I printed it out. It was the, that was the only change. Yeah, it was. If you yeah. Go to the investigation. You now have to see it through to the end. You can't just let the employee quit and go on. Okay. Lisa, thank your folks for that and the 10 pounds it was going to bring so um, <laughs> but if nobody has anything else we will adjourn i make a motion we adjourn okay I'm and you second and here's your feedback <laughs> hey crystal did did i miss something about the committee meeting for the evaluation okay. Okay.